Hello everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful time. Today, I would like to share my experience of this newly released SMS AL200 integrated amplifier featuring Infineon uh, Class D chip with Cyrus Logic CS43131 digital to analog converter chips as well as JRC volume control chips. So they are highly regarded digital chips manufacturer that uses in a lot of pro audio equipment as well as mobile devices and headsets and VR headsets. The Cyrus Logic 43131 chip is two channel 32 bit chip with high resolution DSD and MQA capable. AL200 is rated for 85 watts at 8 ohm load and 170 watts at 4 ohm load with very good uh, signal to noise ratio and very low distortion that they offer. It comes with fully functional, fully featured remote control, build quality and features and everything combined. I think this is another very good price offering from SMS Audio, especially if you are shopping for entry level integrated amplifier. And then I connected my active subwoofer with this AL200 speaker terminals. So my Martin Logan Dynamo subwoofer has a high level input, so I have no problem whatsoever using it. Most of the Martin Logan subwoofer, the ground is lifted as well as the high level input has the 100K resistor in there. So that way you are not getting driving power from your amplifier. That is my setup that I would like to mention it to you. I have no problem using it with high level input on subwoofer, no overheating nothing's going on. So that's the uh, one thing that I would like to let you know. Finishing quality and features and everything combined, I was so impressed by the way that it can reproduce the sound. Sound stage is very wide as well as giving you nice depth to it. So stereo image wise, it may, <laughs> it's not my favorite in that regard, right? Stereo image is okay, nice and broad soundscape with nice clarity and detailed sound quality. But if you are looking for dead center stereo image, it may not be as precise as I would like to hear. So that's the a little downside for me. I try to play around, adjust the speaker position, and I try that. In this AL200, there is a lot of menu that you can go through. Just one touch of the button, you can connect to USB, optical, coaxial, and line level input, and Bluetooth. The Bluetooth input and um, USB input, right? If music is not playing, there is a little bit of uh, digital background noise that I can hear. Clearly, I can hear. so. It's like a high pitch background noise. That's a little downside for me personally. And next good thing is you can control input selector and everything through remote control and function key work as the uh, display on and off. So that is a nice feature. Everything works wonderfully well. So. Those are all the settings that I have in here. That little digital background noise when using USB input and Bluetooth input may not be noticeable for many people, but I'm a little bit sensitive to it so I could clearly notice it. Otherwise, totally quiet unit if you're using line level input or optical or coaxial input. Internet deck wise, it's slightly better than this Wii and Pro deck in overall sound quality. I will be using this CSS2 DDX towers to give you sound sample because I want to show its ability to drive base quality and quantity out of these towers. But I ran into a little bit of problem. There's a track that I use in, oh, I will have all the list of the music that I use in this review. So there's a track called uh, Seagull, right? That is a uh, Ed Sheeran track with kind of like reggaeton kind of music with 
uh, a lot of bass line in mid bass and upper bass and everything combines lower the uh, impedance you know when you get to the speakers either of the speaker right when i raise the volume control to 25 as you can see on the screen what happened is the protection socket will kick in so it won't let you overload the amplifier so which is a good feature in my opinion a lot of music that i try have no problem going up to like 90 95 db loudness so that's the one thing that I would like to let you know. Another thing is, I like the sound of it up to 80, 85 dB maximum with this Musician Night 1 or 2 DDX, doesn't matter. Because if I go past the threshold, right? Let's say if I try to get to like 85 to 90 dB range, it gets brighter, you know, sound get thinner, a lot thinner than if you are keeping at the 80 dB range. So I would recommend that is, uh, you know, based on these kind of speakers. If you have very good higher sensitivity speaker, it should not have any problem going up to 100 dB range. Like if you have uh, like 90 dB sensitive or 95 dB sensitive speakers, you should be fine. So that's the another thing that I would like to mention it to you. Other than that, I don't have any problem. Oh, one more thing. In this AL200, it has all the setting menu that you can go through using the one control knob on the front panel. Then when you go through it, there is the one thing that missing. I don't know what happened. The filter selection is missing in the menu. It may be intentional, it may be not, so I don't know. If filter section is available, it will be really nice. In this price point, $260, you have nice class D amplifier stage and inputs and everything and decent amount of power to drive. Plus, if you have that kind of deck feature like NOS and that available, that will be great bargain. As well as giving you nice and warmish sound quality with nice instrument separation, like a really nice depth to it as well in terms of uh, overall sound staging and soundscape itself is and the width is as good as any other amplifiers in general width of the sound stages and voices and vocals are very natural and accurate as it, it can be so those are pretty much all the pros and cons using this al200 in my system so while I'm trying changing the speakers, what I notice is Synergy is better with 2DDX than the Musician Night One because Musician Night One tweeter is more revealing, more precise to your image as well as it gives me brighter sound as well. So that's the difference between amplifiers such as Deno PME 600NE. So 600NE also have a power limitation, right? They do it differently. It doesn't do a protection socket kicked in or that kind of stuff. It just don't get louder. So that is a Deno PME 600NE in comparison. It won't get go past that loudness if that threshold or the limit is reached. So, but it won't get sound that thin either. If you want to play really loud, then uh, you know you need to look something else because if you do average level like between 55 to 75, 80 dB loudness or even 85 dB maximum loudness given you know average modern speakers. So that kind of loudness level, this AL200 will work totally fine. No problem. If you want to go above that level, it's not gonna be a good choice or amplifier for you in general because even it don't get into protection socket kicking in, it will sound thinner and shallower, so which is not enjoyable for me. That's the, uh, my advice to you. And it remote control and everything, functionality, everything works perfectly. Binding post better than other uh, like uh, SMS uh, amplifiers in general. Binding post on this one is a bit stronger and more solid feeling to it. The rest of the build quality is pretty much 
good quality built for the price that you are getting, $260, then you have high resolution deck and good sounding amplifier in there. So that's it, my friend. That is my experience. Thank you very much for watching and happy listening. Say nothing